Kate from Huckberry called me and we decided to do this thing that Josh is the host of. It's this cool show where they travel around, they go to a place, they find a host chef, send them off into the countryside to find badass ingredients and then come back and cook them. In this episode of Dirt, we are in the deep south. Louisiana is wonderfully different from my home state of Washington, a geography shaped and reshaped by the Mississippi River. The heat and the humidity and the mix of cultures from around the world has set the stage for a place that's unique, vibrant, and wild. All part of the fabric that makes up Louisiana. I feel like this goat's gonna poop on me. Mason. Yo! <laughs> welcome. welcome to Molly's. Welcome to New Orleans. What an amazing little corner of the world. Oh, pardon us, Sean. This is Sean. So we opened Molly's three years ago now, two okay. years after we opened Turkey and the Wolf. All right. Uh, and this is kind of our breakfast spot. We got grits. We got collard greens. Ooh. We got biscuits. This is fresh out the oven, brother. When we opened, I wanted it to be like a cool spot for kids to get really amped when they walk in. But from the perspective of grown-ups being like, those are the toys I wanted when I was a kid that I never got. The first pair of rollerblades I ever had up there. Yeah, some of this shit's been up there for a long time. I had a gallon of mayo up there for two years and it got to a color where I had to remove it. Welcome to Molly's. All right, boot it up. Let's go. I moved to New Orleans and I was not here but for maybe a week before I realized that this was the most special place I'd ever been, you know? A couple days later I was a lifer. I'm never leaving New Orleans. Our adventure begins with Mason. Chefs have unique access to a place and the people within it. Through their restaurants, they are part of the pulse of their cities. Through the ingredients they source, they create deep connections far beyond the city limits. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Small batch today. You got more bread? No. So what makes this place so special to you? Oh, it's the number one sandwich shop in the world. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I didn't say that. New Orleans. New Orleans is all about the people. Yeah. Right? You know, we were just hanging out here and Siobhan delivered the bread. Yeah. And like, she's one of my best friends. And I don't know if I were in another city, if that's how that would happen. Just yeah. everyone has a story to tell. Everyone is so nice. There's like so much community. Yeah. Um, Do you think that that connects you more to the ingredients that you serve in your restaurants? I mean, New Orleans has the best ingredients in the world, whether or not you're talking about art, music, people. Sure. And then obviously we've got some of the best food in the country. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that is the ingredients. And all around Louisiana, South Louisiana especially, you've got some of the coolest ingredients ever to work with. Oh, it worked, holy shit. That's my Louisiana. It's, it's a little big in the toe. We're in New Orleans. Okay. We're gonna send you down to Venice. Okay. We're gonna hit up Lafayette. All right. And then we're gonna go north of Baton Rouge to St. Francisville. Okay. And then we're gonna party back in New Orleans on the last night, cook, hang with our friends, and have a real good time. Sounds like a journey. This is a really bad map, but I think it's good. Janky's good. See you in a couple days. See you then. The Mississippi River runs right through New Orleans and keeps on flowing southeast, which is where we're headed to meet up with Steven, a retired vet of the 75th Ranger Regiment and local knife maker. I moved back here November of 2019. Steven. What's up, dude? We <laughs> shut down the world a couple months after that. And you want it. And that was it, dude. I yeah. was like, okay, it's I'm a knife maker now. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. I'm doing this now. Okay. All right, Josh. So excited to show you this Marsh set, man. Right. This is every knife that you're going to need on your trip here in Louisiana. Okay. Yeah, Steven. That's amazing. Thank you, yeah. sir. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Our first stop is Venice. To get there, we head south on Route 23. The road runs alongside the Mississippi River, and we follow it until it reaches the Gulf. 
Venice sits at the very end at an elevation of zero. Yeah, where it's a big thing in Washington. We love a fucking oyster. We're all the way you know, south Louisiana, as far as you can go. They call it the bird's foot, where the Mississippi branches off in the Passalucha, South Pass, Southwest Pass. I've been down here my whole life, taking in everything I can from it, you know? Venice's geography makes it uniquely vulnerable to the hurricanes that rip through Louisiana. Storms have always been part of life down here, and Jace's family has weathered them for generations. Beautiful, look how beautiful that is. And these are the people's oh, camps, you know, they come here for the weekend. And then they're getting water pumped in. Some of them have filtration systems, but most of them, you'll see, they just get them out the gutters. Rainwater goes into a silo, yeah. and they just collect rainwater. Got it. Jace's great-grandparents were the original swamp cowboys, cattle farming these barrier islands for the past three generations. Josh, you wanna come cut this thistle? This one's good. My cousin would eat it all like that. I say, what's the preparation? Josh was saying earlier, he said, man, what's that smell? I said, it's the willows. It's my favorite smell in the world. It smells that make you remember like your childhood. And it's funny, while we're walking around, I can smell like the cow droppings. And some people might think, oh man, it smells like, it smells like cow dropping around here, but I love it. When I smell it, I remember when I was a kid catching cows, coming to pick blackberries. See, here's a couple red ones. All that, it just brings back memories to me. The ones with the bigger buzz, pick them off, let it roll. I think I'm starting to get a Creole accent, is that weird? It's kind of corny, right? That Cajun, boy. As the sun sets, we begin our hunt. Wild hogs are an invasive species that were introduced to Louisiana in the 1500s by the Spanish conquistadors. They are everywhere now, wreaking havoc in each of Louisiana's 64 parishes. In an attempt to manage the population, they are now legal to hunt for sport. Although I'm an avid fisherman and forager, I have never shot big game. I'm nervous and excited. You saw a snake? Fuck yeah. Yeah, this is a fucking huge snake. the one that passed over my foot. Yeah, he went right in front of you. It's right here somewhere. How do you like to do? You like those slices? Yeah, so we'll start here and just. It almost makes a circle like an onion ring or something. This one ain't got much fat. When they got a bunch of fat on them, the best tasting pork chop you ever had in your life. We're taking this hog up to Lafayette to turn it into a Cajun delicacy. But first, we're stopping in Empire to meet up with one of Jace's high school friends, Matt. Dad's like, if you're an oyster boat captain, you're an engineer, you're a maid, you're a chef, <laughs> you're basically like a mom at home. The instant coffee, I'm gonna say, don't knock it till you try it. That's my dad shoveling oysters as like a five-year-old. <laughs> Oysters trace back to the French and Croatian settlers who came here in the 1800s. Matt Tezvish is a fourth generation oyster farmer of Croatian heritage. You want to? You want me to like give you a rundown and you just act like you've been doing it, or? Uh... I mean, I won't act like I've been doing it, but I would love to give it a try. Anything that I won't fuck up. Right by you? Yeah. Now sling it back. There you go. The big difference between farming oysters and, and dredging oysters, like what you did in that other episode, yeah. we basically uh, touch the oysters as little as possible. We just want to leave it alone. We don't want to upset those little spats. Got it. And because of that, you'll get uh, seven, seven or eight oysters growing on one rock. And these oysters are a big industry down here with Louisiana producing more than any other state. Y'all keeping score? 
The brackish water along the coast makes these meat rocks bigger and sweeter than the ones I'm used to in Washington. Little Tabasco, that's really nice. Oh yeah, real tight. Hey, that was good. That was solid for your first dump. Don't take that out of context. Hey It's the opening day for shrimp season, so we're making a quick stop at the next dock over to a grab a bonus ingredient for Mason. Just like oysters, shrimp is a huge industry down here in Louisiana. That's great. Is that 20? That's only 10. Yeah, 10 pounds is good. We've left the marsh and are now headed to the bayou. Our first stop is right outside Lafayette, where we are meeting up with local musician and wild man, Cedric Watson. Figured that'd be good for y'all's camera. <laughs> Cedric, where are we? <laughs> this is Lake Martin. This is one of my favorite places to come uh, fishing or just come out and enjoy the swamp. What uh, what is pirogue? Is that pirogue? Also... Well, the word is French, like okay. pirogue, or in Spanish it would be piragua. Okay. But uh, it's a one of these. It's just a basic little wooden boat that you're gonna see like in West Africa, like in Senegal. They have pirogue. This is swamp. You have cypress trees and uh, so these are cypress, cypress and tupelos, and that's the same same material that's made these boats. Is this cypress? That's right. Whenever you get really quiet out here, sometimes the birds and stuff just forget that you you know they forget you're here. They start to make a lot of noise and get a lot of action. <laughs> De trente matelots sur le bord de l'île. De trente matelots sur le bord de l'eau, sur le bord du ruisseau. J'aimerais la savoir sur le bord de l'île. J'aimerais la savoir sur le bord de l'eau, sur le bord du ruisseau. Whoa, that's a big succale, man. Dude, that's a nice size you got right there, bro. Yo, yeah, yeah, you got him. See, that's, when you hanging with Wild Watson, you always hook fish like that, you see? <laughs> so, yes, what are we cooking today? We're cooking a couvillon. It's not exactly West African, even though a lot of what we call cre uh, Creole is actually West African, like gumbo and things like that, yeah. or okra. Well, a lot of it is French, too, like couvillon. So for Creole cooking, you're adding spice, you're adding texture. And lots of soul. You see how flaky the meat is of the uh, crappie, of the sacale? Very flaky white meat. Good stuff. Woo! Then you want sloppy mama. On the other side of town is the Acadian Superette. The specialty here is boudin a sausage traditionally made with pork and rice. Ours will be made with wild hog. We got the Louisiana special truck. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I figured, I was like, you drove that in? I was like, uh, I was like, that's a rental? OK. I usually rent a, a Kia uh, yeah, Rio right. or something, yeah. To your left. Perfect. One, two, three. All right. God, it smells so good in here. Thank you, man. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. You're usually going to catch a little bit of scapula. So you are uh, a butcher, yeah, a restaurateur, yeah, and your other job is a surgeon. Yeah, that's right. I'm a general surgeon. General surgeon. Yeah. Um, I find that to be incredibly interesting. Well, it's you know, it's uh, it's it's fun, and I this is my uh, I have to say, my wife encouraged me at some point. She probably regrets it, but she's like, if you don't get creative. You know, follow your creative side. At a certain point, you know, you might lose it. Isn't it. that great? It's like, okay, well, Good all right. Well, her. guess what I like to do? Good for her. Yeah. Oh, that's so. lovely because I can imagine, yeah. as a surgeon, it's a great responsibility. It takes a great amount of time. But it isn't necessarily creative because who would want a creative surgeon? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robert grew up here in Lafayette, but moved to Brooklyn for his surgical residency. Living in the outer boroughs of NYC changed his perspective on food and strengthened his connection to the cuisine he grew up on. The Superette is a thoughtful tribute to his heritage and Cajun plate lunch culture. 
Robert will finish the boudin overnight. We'll pick it up on our way back to New Orleans in a couple of days. I think I need nothing else. We're good to go. Today we are crossing the Mississippi and heading northeast to St. Francisville to meet with Mason's friend Sarah on her farm, appropriately named Bayou Sarah Farms. The hot, wet climate makes it the perfect place to raise water buffalo, and that's exactly what Sarah is doing. Um, I have a milking parlor that is in this barn okay. um, that actually became the first Milking, buffalo milking parlor in Louisiana. Um, nobody else here has a water buffalo dairy. Yeah. And um, I'm just slowly building my herd. Do you know them all by name? Oh yeah. I could walk out here at night with a blindfold on and touch them and tell you who they are. Stevie. Cassie K. Dolores. Anasazi. Little brandy milk punch for you. Sarah is constantly experimenting with buffalo milk, making all sorts of gelatos and cheeses. This morning, we're making fresh chev using the water buffalo milk. Okay, I see, I see. So this is the stomach of the goat, and inside the stomach, all of this stuff is actually cheese that the goat made while it was still alive. Come on. Yeah, so like when a baby spits up on your shoulder, right. that's cheese, it's curds, it's curds and whey. You just changed <laughs> so many lives in that statement. Yeah. Like, it's, it's do you wanna try it? Yes, I do wanna <laughs> try it. Let me add that goat's stomach. It's so foul. Um, <laughs> How's that? I mean, it's really strong. <laughs> Hold up. Um, the cheese from a baby goat's stomach mm -hmm. is is really neutralized with um, a buffalo milk cocktail. That's great. I mean, we've only been here for an hour. This is incredible. <laughs> you know, people are starting to be more conscious of where their food comes from, and I think that it, it is a, a movement that is happening, and I, I don't necessarily know where I stand in it. So I just, I'm just experimenting with all of these things at this point in life. Can I pick them up? Yep. Just to add turtle pee to the list of amazing things I've been trenched on. I told you I'm severely allergic to bees, right? The visit to Sarah's farm ended with the crew covered in bee sticks, dripping in honey, tears streaming down our faces from laughing. We filled our pockets with psilocybin gifts from the water buffalo poop, and we're on our way to find our final ingredient. <laughs> our final ingredient can be found in the rice fields of Crowley, a town located back towards Lafayette. Unlike St. Francisville, it is as flat as can be, which makes it perfect for growing rice and raising crawfish. What up, dude? Hell yeah. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, man. Welcome. How's it going? How's the trip? So the best? Things. It's about to get better. This is my cousin, Ben. We are meeting up with Meg, a third generation boiler whose family is famous in these parts for starting Hawk's Crawfish. Mason swears Hawks is the best in Louisiana, so he drove out to meet us. You want to I love it. Like my dad says, he, he would sell crawfish to his bus driver for like 25 cents a pound. So he would go out and like just catch it by hand. Oh, that's a lot of work for yeah. 25 cents a pound. Well, back in the, you know, 69, right, yeah. 70, yeah. I mean, right? You could have bought a house for $100, but Anyway, so he started out doing it like that, and then in the 80s, yes. my grandfather opened up Hawks right out down the road from here, and that's when it like really went boom, and people went crazy for it. 
I cook crawfish in New Orleans, which is like, they keep all the best craw crawfish out here, right? We get the, right? The, wouldn't you say all the best crawfish stays in Lafayette? Yeah. 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 Put your tongue on, I dare you. It's just cayenne or something else? It's got something else in it. What else? Something that's hotter than cayenne? Watch it. Do it, boss. Do it. I dare you. I dare you. How hot is it? What did you put in there? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, we gotta take all the fat. I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let's say we're gonna take this crawfish right here and we're gonna get all the fat out. Okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this guy up, right? And I'm gonna get hot, hot dough. So it's like where the lungs and stuff are. And you wanna get, I mean, y'all, it's gonna be, it's gonna take a lot. So we got about 70 pounds of crawfish right here, and we'll probably get maybe two or three ounces of fat. I that just tasted is, that fat, oh, that is. Isn't that good? That's gonna make the best etouffee, or whatever Mason's gonna come up with in his crazy mind. <laughs> Cause I'm sure it's gonna be wild. That dude don't play. We left Meg's family boil, our tongues numb and eyes blurry. Our hearts and bellies were full, overwhelmed by a beautiful night of Louisiana hospitality. Mason and I are headed back to New Orleans for the final feast. But first, we're stopping at Roberts oh, to grab from, the boudin. The only part that's not from the wild hog itself is the lard that we use to kind of right. to brown the meat in the pot first. But that's we did incredible. slice open the bones to get the marrow and the cartilage and everything from it, so that kind of went into it as well. Shit, is this the same? Pot. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. That's Holy just the cow. Oh, yeah, baby. It's so good. Oh, thank you, man. It is thank so you. good. I get it now. Admittedly, that was my second bite of boudin ever, and uh, it's like my seven trillion. Yeah. Let's cook. Connection to people is the most important thing to me. On this trip, I felt a place. All of my senses went deep, and I'm left less with the memories of the physical places we visited, and more with the spirit of the people we met. Yeah, enjoy. I traveled as a rover, all by myself. The things that satisfy me, Lord. It's 100% sourdough pizza dough from Molly's. Damn. Don't be a bit of pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Back in. Let's do it. I talked about the jaw falling off. Cheek meat, eyeballs. It all goes in. Do the honors, brother. Don't forget to take down that. Dang, dude. It's all right. That's real nice. My baby's gonna leave me and I'm on in the blues. I walked a hundred miles or more and wore out my shoes. Uh, I think are I'm you, going crazy. Kate, do you have an EpiPen? What am I gonna do? I think I'll join the Legion and see the world through. Run wild. That's the crawfish fat from when we put our fingers in the crawfish heads. Oh, we're about to light it up, but tonight everything's gonna be all right. Meg's crawfish Ready? dust is for her grandmother right here. The crawfish queen. 